let's talk about some movies. I'm Ryan Bueller, and today I'm going to be talking about Chaos Walking. But before we get into the review, um, like what I did in the previous video, I have a first time watch of the week. Uh, yes, getting excited for the new Godzilla movie. I have been watching a bunch of the old movies, um, but I kind of want to save those for a separate video. Um, so I'm just going to talk about Isle of Dogs that I just saw with my boy Noah. Um, recently came out on Disney Plus, and I've been meaning to watch this movie for a long time, ever since it came out. So finally, I finally got the chance to watch it. It's uh, directed by Wes Anderson. Um, it's one of two movies I've seen by him, the other one being Fantastic Mr. Fox. Um, and I really like that movie. Uh, I really need to watch more of his films. Hopefully I can get around to doing that soon. Um, but I really like Fantastic Mr. Fox as a kid, and uh, knowing that it's the same director, it's a stop-motion film, it has that same kind of clunkiness, that humor um, as Fantastic Mr. Fox, so really glad that it carried over. Um, yes, this is a stop-motion film, and I think they do a fantastic job, and I really hope Wes Anderson does more films like this, because I love stop-motion films. So the film is about um, this canine flu that, cro that goes across Japan, um, affecting all of the dogs and the leader of Japan has to decide to send them all away um, to be put on this island that's pretty much a big dump full of garbage and everything um, so it's kind of showing us that story and the dogs being there and then one day this 12 year old boy shows up looking for his beloved pet um, and then they go on this journey trying to um, reunite the boy with his dog uh, this is a this was just a really fun entertaining film um, really humorous, um, it works as a kid's movie and an adult film, uh, because it has the aspects to be a kid's movie, it has talking dogs, and has that humorous side to it, but it also has these mature, um, themes and political views that are in it, uh, so I think it works both ways, it's a really good story, uh, the animation is fantastic, referring to the stop motion, uh, characters were great. They were very similar to characters from Fantastic Mr. Fox. You kind of saw the same kind of um, characters here again. Uh, voice acting was pretty awesome with Brian Cranston and uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson and Edward Norton. Uh, so that was really cool. Some big name actors being in this film. Um, it's kind of crazy how this movie has, hasn't been um, as praised as other movies. This is actually a really good film and a lot more people should watch it. Um, I, my, one of my favorite aspects of the movie is the fact that it takes place in Japan and everybody in Japan speaks Japanese. Um, instead, instead of changing everybody to speak English so it's easier to follow, everyone still speaks Japanese so it stays true to the, um, the realism of that. Um, usually any scene with, uh, like the people from Japan, it's through like these newscasts and we have this person translating as if it's like the news, wa like us watching the news. So I thought that was very creative and well done. Um, there's a few scenes that there's subtitles, and the kid entirely speaks Japanese, so the communication between him and the dog, dogs are um, very difficult, but it kind of makes sense because the dog and the humans don't really, wouldn't really communicate very well um, in real life, so I liked how it had that, uh, it worked that way in, um, and it kind of, it, I think it worked very well. So overall, I really like this movie, and I would definitely recommend checking it out. And uh, before we get into the video, I wanted to real quick talk about, I got a couple new Blu-rays. My friend Noah, who I watch Isle of Dogs, recommended me watching Wayne's World. Um, so I finally picked this up so we can watch it. Hopefully we can watch it soon. And my pre-order for the film Psycho Goreman just came in. Um, not entirely sure exactly how this movie's going to go, but the trailer seems pretty interesting. This really... Um, funny 80s kind of movie uh kind of like i don't know it's gonna be weird uh and i'm kind of excited to check it out so we'll see how that goes without further ado let's talk about the main event chaos walking 2021 movie that just came out in theaters um this movie was originally supposed to come out in 2020 and I think also in 2019, but it got pushed back for reshoots. So we're finally getting this movie. Ever since the film got announced, I was really excited for it. Uh, the concept really uh, grabbed my attention and I was really hoping for this really awesome sci-fi film. Um, directed by Doug Lyman and it stars Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley. Uh, the two stars really were the reason why I was really interested because it, was, it would be nice to see them both in different roles. 
Tom Holland proved himself to be fantastic in The Devil all the time. Um, and I really wanted to see what Daisy Ridley was capable of after her being in the Star Wars movies. So the movie is about um, this town of people. There's no women left in the world. It's just guys. And for whatever reason, um, their thoughts are projected out of them. Um, they are they refer to as the noise where people can see your thoughts and people have to try to figure out a way of um, concealing their thoughts so people can't see uh, what they're thinking. Um, Tom Holland and one day he comes across Daisy Ridley's character the first woman he's seen ever um, in the woods and uh, they go on this adventure together um. so the concepts really cool I like that I was very curious to see what they were gonna go with it unfortunately they kind of went for a more generic story a very generic plot um, I don't know exactly how the story goes in the um, book series uh, because this is a trilogy of books, this is, um, I'm assuming, based off of the first book. <clears throat> but, yeah, they, this the story was just really generic. We've kind of seen this kind of story being told. They didn't really, I don't think they used the concept to its full um, capacity. I think there was plenty of other avenues they could have gone with, more psychological aspects. Um, and there was a lot of just confusing parts. The first 30 minutes of the first, I, I want to say the first 20 minutes of this movie, I was honestly just, just really confused and overwhelmed by all these characters with their thoughts being said and just people talking constantly, but not actually talking. It was kind of overwhelming and I kind of was like, mm, I don't know if I could deal with this movie. Kind of regretted being there. Um, but Tom Holland is usually the only one who has the thoughts coming up uh, throughout the entire film uh, for the most part. So it kind of, condenses the amount of um, overwhelming aspects. I think it kind of worked once it got to just Tom Holland because um, Daisy Ridley being a woman, her thoughts aren't projected out, so they're trying to figure out what's going on with that. I thought that introduced a really good dynamic because the, my favorite part of this movie was Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley's dynamic where Tom Holland perfectly represents what a teenage boy would do in this situation. Meeting a girl for the very first time, he starts thinking about her, um, falling in love with her and having thoughts and he's trying to conceal them but he can't always and it's pretty humorous whenever she sees him thinking like he's thinking about kissing her or wanting her to kiss him. It was really funny and I thought was really realistic and just the pure fun of this movie. Um, I had a blast with that, but I don't think that was enough to save this movie overall because of the plot being so generic. Unfortunately, I saw the twist for this movie coming a mile away, so that was kind of disappointing. Um, yeah, it was, it was just kind of disappointing. Um, and there was a couple things that kind of, I understand, left open for potential of a sequel and a trilogy, but it kind of felt like it should have gone somewhat full circle and it didn't quite in certain areas of the story. Overall, Chaos Walking I thought was a fun concept but just wasn't executed properly. I was reading up that Charlie Kaufman, the man himself who did Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, and I'm thinking of ending things and adaptation, all these fantastic movies, being John Malkovich, he wrote a script for this movie and I think he would have brought a masterpiece to the screen. And it's just really unfortunate he really could have done a fantastic job with this concept. Uh, apparently there were still things from his script that were in the film like certain dialogue or something like that. Um, so I appreciate that, but he could have done a great thing with this story. And the guy who brought us back to the future, Robert, Robert Zemex, I talked about um, in the previous, one of the previous uh, reviews for Who Framed Roger Rabbit. He was, a, he was in talks to make the movie. So it's just, I'm not saying anything wrong with Doug Lyman. He did The Born Identity and um, Edge of Tomorrow, two great movies, but I don't know. It's probably, it might, it might just be the source material. I don't know, I didn't read the books. So yeah, those are my thoughts. It was an okay movie. It, there could have been a lot more to it and it could have been a lot better. So it's kind of just a little, it's it's disappointing on those aspects, but the, the characters were fun. But overall, the story itself was kind of boring and there were things that were just uninteresting and didn't really go anywhere. So yeah, those are my thoughts on that. Now, if you're looking for a good sci-fi movie, I have a recommendation for you. Um, towards the end of 2020, I was looking up uh, Cinema Fix on YouTube. They did a video on their favorite movies of each genre from the year of 2020. And um, I had an expectation of what the sci-fi genre was going to be. And they came out of nowhere it's with this movie called The Vast of Night. It came out on Amazon Prime. And I had never heard of it. Didn't know it existed. But they said that it was fantastic. And 
the way that the trailer was and the concept, um, the feel of it, I had to watch it. And I watched it right after finishing that video. I went and watched it, and I'm so glad that I did because this movie was absolutely fantastic. The directorial debut of Andrew Patterson brings us this fantastic movie. And it's really impressive that his first um, big film is this because this movie's awesome. Um, Letterbox's description of The Vast of Night is, At the dawn of the space race, two radio-obsessed teens discover a strange frequency over the airwaves in what becomes the most important night of their lives and in the history of their small town. Um, so the movie pays many respects to the original Twilight Zone show um, from the 50s and 60s. Uh, the opening is straight out of the Twilight Zone. Um, it go goes back and forth between black and white. And a uh, big thing with the Twilight Zone, most of the episodes were very condensed on the like the one character in this situation. Even though it might be a larger scale, um, stuff going on, it's really condensed to focus on that. And that's what this movie does. And it does it beautifully. Um, it chooses to be in this time period, um, focusing on the ra radio waves. It perfectly... Um, brings you into the environment and the time period and you feel like you're right there like it makes you feel like you're living in the 50s and the greatness of this movie was the way that it handled everything very subtly like not anything huge no big explosions not all this crazy CGI the entire film is through phone calls and interviews and interviews over the radio and people talking over the radio and this eeriness of this sound coming through the radio waves was just really well done and I've never been so captivated in listening to someone being interviewed in my entire life. The suspense of this movie was fantastic, had you on the edge of your seat to find out what's going on next. It just really had you glued to the screen wanting to know more. Um, acting wise, both of these two lesser known uh, leads, their names are Sierra McCormick and Jake Horowitz, did a fantastic job in their roles. Uh, cinematography was fantastic, very beautiful, very 50s, 60s sci-fi vibe to it, and it really it looked nice. Soundtrack was very similar to Stranger Things, even though it's from a different time period, had that kind of um, techno feel that just really worked and I really liked. Um, yeah, I just, in, it, instead of going on a larger scale, it kept the story very condensed and really focused on these characters and not knowing what's going on outside of this town, really just focus on this town and not, and like running around trying to learn more about <clears throat> what's going on and trying to figure it out and talking to characters and, and Vast of Night kind of has a slow opening. The first like 20 ish minutes are pretty slow and don't let that stop you from watching the rest of this movie because it gets so much better, but just because of the time, uh, period that they're trying to recreate that's why it's so slow i think this was a fantastic movie and i would absolutely recommend to anybody who likes sci-fi anybody who likes the twilight zone it's just any anybody who likes t this time period watch watching movies from this time period well, it was just fantastic i cannot believe this movie fell under the radar and i think people should watch this this is a movie you need to watch vast of night go check it out it's on amazon prime um, so yeah, um, those are the movies of the week. Isle of Dogs by Wes Anderson, Chaos Walking by Doug Lyman in theaters uh, right now. And go check out The Vast of Night on Amazon Prime streaming now. Um, go check them out and have a great day.